everyone, it's Underwater Fish here, and today I'll be reviewing the Touch of Magic tool and breaking down what all of those options mean. It can be kind of confusing because Disney Dreamlight Valley has not released an official tutorial on how to use all of these items. So I'm going to try and put it into a format that makes it easy for you to understand so that you can create your own customized designs. If you like this tip, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and you'll find some more fun tips, tricks, and designs. All right, let's get into it. First thing to know is that you can design both clothes and furniture. It's important to note that if designing furniture, you do have to craft the furniture item in the workbench before you can place it in your valley. A common question I get is, do I have to make multiple of the same design to place it in my valley? The answer is no. You just have to create one design, but you can craft as many items as you want to place in your valley. So you can apply that one design to multiple crafted items. After you've crafted the item you want to customize, open the furniture edit menu, select customization, and choose the item you want to customize. I will be using a basic chair today as an example, but do know this tutorial can be applied to any of the furniture or clothing items that you want to design. Let's take a look at these two squares at the bottom first. You'll see that there's two options here, and basically that just means that there's two sections of this chair that we can edit. Sometimes you'll find that there's only one option. The plus sign at the top basically is just where all of your motifs are. You can add up to 50 layers of motifs, and we'll get into this a little bit more later. If we start with the first square on the bottom, we can see all of the different options. The first big square is going to be where you can change the material of the seat. And there's all of these different options that you can choose. You can make lots and lots of adjustments to them. So feel free to use a template here, or you can kind of build off of it on your own. I don't want to use any templates, so I'm just going to keep it a basic color and then add designs on top of it. For the small square that's underneath that big square, that's how you're going to change the color of the item. In a little bit further into the video, you will see that sometimes you can change it to multiple colors and there's various color options that you can choose from. I'm gonna stick with this pink here and go from there. Below that, we have the glossiness, how shiny you want the item to be. Um, so depending on what you're working on, sometimes you might want it to be shiny. And then we have the metal option. You can toggle that on or off and you can see that it kind of makes it a little bit darker and when you have it super glossy, it gives it that reflective look like it's a metal object. So for this, I don't want it to be glossy. I don't want the metal on, so I'm gonna turn that off because I want this to be a seat cushion. Then if we move on to the second color, I'm gonna look at the material options that we have and choose the material I think is best for this. I'm gonna choose this wood material here because I want it to be a wood chair and it's a good example to show you the two tones of an object and how you can choose different colors. So from here, you just choose the first color that you want it to be, and then we move over to the second small square, and from there, we can choose what we want our secondary color to look like. Let's take a look at the plus sign here where all of the motifs are held. Motifs are found through storylines, in the star path or in any of those chests that you can find around the valley. This is probably some of the most complicated parts of designing your object here. So if we take a look, there's so many different types of designs that you can add into this. And I'm just gonna go over to the character section and choose the Mickey head for ease of design. Once you've selected your motif, you'll see four different options here on the screen in that circle. The first one is going to be where you can make the item larger or smaller. The next one you're going to find is the rotate button. Then just like we can change the color of the chair itself, we can also change the color of the motif. And the last option is going to be that little cube there, which is how you're going to make additional edits to your motif. The first option lets you flip your design. Since this is a symmetrical design, we won't be able to see it, and I'll come back to this to show you with another design. Then if we go to this option, it's going to mirror your design or your motif to the other side. This does create a second motif, so now you have two layers on your design and you can edit each individually. 
The third object is going to be a snip tool, which makes it transparent. So if you have a motif, you can place something on top of it and that allows you to create a different type of design here. So if I wanted to, for this Mickey head, let's say I wanted the center to have the same color as the seat, but make it kind of just a little outline on the outside, I could do the snippet tool to give it that transparent look and just have an outline of a Mickey head. Now, the order that you have these motifs on the left-hand side does matter. If you have an object like a transparent item below something that is solid, you have to move it above it. Otherwise, you will not see that item. So make sure that you drag everything into the right spots so that you can see the design that you want to see. For our fourth option here, it's going to multiply your design across your entire seat here. This is really nice because it doesn't take multiple layers, it's just the one layer here, but it's multiplied across. This is useful because you can rotate the entire design rather than having to rotate each individual motif. This fifth square is really for if you have something like a shirt where it's going to put that design on the front and the back of the shirt at the same time. And then this globe one makes it to where you can see the object from a different type of perspective. So you can see how the item is getting stretched across the whole design. It's not static there. When you choose the globe, it makes it flat and it doesn't stretch across the entire design. Let me go ahead and add a different motif here that's easier for you to see the different options that I couldn't show you before. So if we want to rotate this, you can see that Tinkerbell is being flopped over because she's not a symmetrical design. You can also rotate that entire design too when you have them spread across like that and you can also mirror them. And just to show you real quick, if we place the design on your shirt item, for example, right here, and you can mirror it onto the front and back when you choose that fifth option. There is a maximum number of designs that you can create, but you can delete things. Just know once you delete a design, it will delete it from your valley if you have it placed out somewhere. That's the basics on how to use the Touch of Magic design tool. Please let me know in the comments if this was helpful or if you have any questions about it. Please make sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. I do have a few rug designs that I intend to create tutorials for, so keep an eye out for those. And thank you so much for watching.